Hello and welcome to Learn Oil Analysis, I'm Adam. It's been a while since I used my own voice for a tutorial in person, but for some reason, people tend to prefer listening to me compared to the well-polished voices. How to read an oil report is the most common question I get on a daily basis, particularly where do all the wear metals come from. So today, you are in for a treat as I have a nice model of an industrial engine and we are going to talk about the metals and elements you might find in it. So here we go. So we have here a model of an emergency gen set. Unfortunately, it's a bit boring from the outside, so let's first remove the engine block so we can have a good look inside the engine. A little zooming here, and apologies for the erratic camera movement, I screen recorded this on my iPad so it might be a little jumpy in places. It's worth noting it's not just splashing that lubricates your engine and there are dedicated lube pathways, as can be seen in this diagram all around the engine. We also see the dipstick, but for the moment these are getting in the way, so we will just remove them. We are also going to go up and remove the cylinder head so we can see inside there too. That's better, so you can now hopefully see the valves and pistons clearly. This bit separating the two is the cylinder head gasket. Now the liner, although hidden from this view is made of iron, will contain coolant channels, which we can see better in this cylinder liner view. I have marked in purple where some coolant will be and the red arrow is the direction across this thin layer of iron. Coolant has to pass for a coolant leak. Now it's not just coolant that can enter the upper cylinder, we have air, which can contain dirt and dust particles. These are made of silicon and aluminium. We also have fuel and soot here too, but these are not metallic elements. So we come down a bit and we have the nice shiny piston skirt made of aluminium. We also have the piston rings made of chromium and sometimes molybdenum too, but molybdenum can also be an oil additive, so it's harder to spot as ring wear. So we have covered the upper cylinder, let's now go down to the lower parts of the engine. I will try not to bump us on the engine crankshaft as I position us at the bottom of the engine. That crankshaft is going to have to go. If I squeeze in between the connecting rods we can hopefully see into the crankshaft bearings. If you ignore the big end getting in the way you will hopefully see I have rimmed in red the bearing shell, which I will toggle on and off to extra help you identify it. I will zoom into the bearing shell further and you will see it is made of three important metals of tin on the surface, lead and then copper. So we can monitor bearing wear progression by monitoring these elements. I hope you enjoyed this video and to check your knowledge I have three little brain teasers for you to check your understanding. 1. If I have iron, sodium and potassium in my engine oil, where is that likely coming from? 2. I have silicon, aluminium and chromium in my oil, what do you think is happening? And 3. For bonus points, how would this differ if I had silicon and aluminium but with no chromium? no iron and just lead and tin? Let me know your guesses in the comments. 